Have you ever wondered if you should discontinue aspirin in your patients who are undergoing cabbage surgery? Well, if so, then this paper will be right on. The study's title is Stopping versus Continuing Aspirin Before Coronary Artery Surgery by Miles et al., published in the New England Journal of Medicine in February 2016. Here's what it's all about. Let's start with some background information. It's been common practice in many, if not most, cardiac centers to discontinue aspirin five to seven days before coronary artery bypass surgery or cabbage in order to reduce the risk of internal bleeding, which would lead to things like reoperation or cardiac tamponade. However, as the risk of bleeding goes down, the risk of thrombotic events might go up when discontinuing aspirin. So we might end up with more cases of graft thrombosis, myocardial infarction, or stroke. Now you could say, but aspirin is recommended within 24 hours of surgery anyway in order to prevent thrombotic events. And I'd say yes, but this will not prevent the patient from having very early post-operative thrombotic complications. That's where the Atticus trial came into the picture. It was intended to answer the question if aspirin would reduce the occurrence of death and thrombotic events in patients who are at increased risk of major complications undergoing cabbage surgery. Patients were eligible if they had not been taking aspirin regularly before the trial or had stopped taking aspirin at least four days before cabbage surgery. Warfarin and clopidogrel had to be stopped at least seven days before surgery. The trial was carried out between March 2006 and January 2013. Overall, 19 centers in five countries participated. 2,100 patients were included in the trial. 1,047 were randomized to 100 milligrams of aspirin, and 1,053 were randomized to placebo. Patients, doctors, and assessors were all blinded to the actual treatment given. Baseline characteristics like age, gender, weight, and comorbidities were all similar in both groups. That's important in a randomized trial like this one, so we know that we're actually comparing apples with apples and to see if randomization was carried out appropriately. The mean age of participants was roughly 66 years and 82% of them were males. The study's primary outcome was a composite of death and thrombotic events that included non-fatal myocardial infarction, stroke, pulmonary embolism, renal failure, or bowel infarction occurring during the initial 30 post-operative days. Important secondary outcomes included non-fatal myocardial infarction occurring 30 days post-operatively, major bleeding leading to reoperation and cardiac tamponade. The primary composite outcome occurred in 19.3% of patients receiving aspirin and 20.4% of patients receiving placebo. Hazard ratio 0.94. Myocardial infarction occurred in 13.8% of aspirin patients and 15.8% of placebo patients. Hazard ratio 0.87. Bleeding leading to reoperation occurred in 1.8 versus 2.1%. Hazard ratio also 0.87. And cardiac tamponade occurred in 1.1% of aspirin patients versus 0.4% of placebo patients. Hazard ratio 2.77. Please note that all confidence intervals cross the value of 1, which means that none of these hazard ratios is statistically significant. So there's no difference between these groups with respect to these outcomes. Another important outcome Length of stay was seven days in both groups, so also no difference. So what does that mean? Does it mean that we shouldn't care about continuing or withholding aspirin in these patients? The data seem to suggest that both approaches seem to be okay or maybe even equivalent. We think that the one key take home message of this paper is never change a winning team. As simple as that. In other words, you shouldn't withdraw aspirin in these patients. It's safe. In fact, withdrawing aspirin might lead to an increased risk of thrombotic events in the immediate preoperative period. In some instances, surgery is postponed in patients in whom aspirin is not canceled early enough, which puts a lot of burden on the patient and the healthcare system and is really not warranted, apparently. So again, never change a winning team. That's what you should take away from the Atticus trial. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to download the infographic that comes with it, and I'll talk to you soon.